What's going on, CUT? How you all doing? So the uh, Temple Ensemble will be back on duty on next Sunday. But I, wanna, I want you to help me say thank you for the, to the Temple Singers for ministering to us. Help me say thank you, CUT. They have been simply amazing. They have uh, effectively carried the mantle and kept the ministry that speaks so profoundly to our soul. They kept that moving right along without missing a beat. Uh, help me say thank you to Martin Woods and Monte Filon. Help me say thank you to our musicians. They, they take care of the business. That's what I love about my church. At Christ Universal Temple, we just take care of the business. That's what we do. What do we do? We just take care of the business. That's what we do. That's what we do. Uh, I've got mixed emotions on this morning because uh, for me, I'm like kind of saying uh, goodbye to a dear friend. This guidelines for a master's series uh, has been a powerful reminder to me. I hope, I hope you've gotten a fraction out of it of what I have gotten, but it has blessed my soul so tremendously. Uh, I'm, I'm better, I'm better than I was four months ago. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. You have to give your own testimony. But this series has, has blessed my soul abundantly as a teacher of it, right? As a teacher of it. It's the first time I taught this, uh, but it certainly won't be the last time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we started at forgiveness. You remember that? We started at forgiveness, and, and today we conclude with rest. The uh, final step or the final process in creation, in the creative process. We uh, know from the Genesis narrative that we, on the seventh day, God finished the work and God rested the seventh day and hallowed it. God rested on the seventh day and hallowed it because the work was finished. God rested on the seventh day and hallowed it because that day of rest was important on the back end of what God had just brought forth out of God's self. But rest is uh, sometimes a challenging concept for those of us who are hyper-driven. You know what I'm talking about? You know anybody that's goal-oriented? Anybody in the room who is task intentional? I remember being in class and, and a very good professor was presenting wonderful information to me and, and while uh, she was presenting that information, I was busy taking notes and at the same time that she was presenting that information, I was busy developing a training uh, at the same time. I'm just, I'm just one of those people. I took a, I took a strength finders test uh, assessment and, and your top five, they give you your top five, and two of my top five were achiever and maximizer. I just, there's something within me, I'm just wired to never be satisfied with where I am. I am always trying to improve myself. It's just always been a part of, of how I get down. It's just how I move. It's just how I'm made. And sometimes that can be a wonderful thing. But then sometimes you have to remind yourself is that once God finishes God's work, if God, God sees that it's important to rest, then even those of us who are intimately interested in doing better have to take time to come apart and just rest. And so we're going to get into that today, but let me just give you a quick review because we said that the creative process begins first in consciousness and it includes a balance of both the thinking and the feeling nature. We said that this process takes place in the entire mind. We remember that thinking is the faculty that is the inlet and the outlet of the God idea. 
but we recognize that thinking is oftentimes active, zealous, impulsive, and not always wise. What the creative process does is it gives us the direction, order, and strategy by which to apply our thinking. Thank you, God. And then we said the feeling nature is external to thought. It is that which is behind the thinking. And for every prompting of the feeling nature, it is aligned with an impulse of the thinking. The creative process helps to discipline and direct our emotional forces. We understand that the mental activity of the mind of God is represented in two phases. First, the conception of the idea. Second, the expression of the idea. But every idea that you and I receive comes completely clothed with everything that is needed for its total manifestation. The idea, if it comes to you, has everything that is needed in order for that idea to be made manifest. The vision, if it comes to you, has everything that is needed for that idea to be made manifest. And so why would we be tripping, laboring every hour of every day, worrying over every detail when everything that you need was given to you in the beginning. We remember through this creative process that the first day's creation reveals the light or inspiration of spirit. The second day establishes faith in our possibilities to bring forth the invisible. The third day's creation or third movement of divine mind, we picture the activity of the ideas in mind through which the imagination is then activated. Is that right? The fourth day exposes the two great lights, the light of will and the light of understanding, as well as our ability to allow those abilities to reflect the true light, the truth of God. The fifth day's creation Reverend McDowell shared with us, brings forth the activity of discrimination and judgment as we discern, evaluate, and come to decisions that separate the useful thoughts from the error thoughts. How many of you know that everything that you think ain't worth thinking? <laughs> the sixth day brings forth after its kind through the realization that every idea has within it the qualities of wisdom and love. And so by the time we get to the seventh day of the creative process, it's time to re rest. Your work is done. It's, it's a healing period. It's a renewing, revitalizing, regenerating period where we take rest in the Lord. Say rest, rest. In, the Lord. in the Lord. Now, from your, from your bulletin insert, and, and I really like this, it caught me, um, it says the seventh day or step, and on the seventh day, take this next part with me, God finished his work. Stop right there. On the seventh day, God finished his work. On the seventh day, God finished uh, his work, and if God finishes his work, and if his work is working in you, then on the seventh day at the period of rest, then the work that you are worrying about was finished because you don't have to finish it. Uh, if, if, if the writer of Genesis is in tune with how God works, you don't have to finish it. God will finish what God begins. Here is, here is what I love about the creative activity of God. God never half does anything. Everything that God does, God finishes it to its perfect completion. Everything that God brings forth out of God's self, God does not leave loose ends. God wraps up tightly in a nice little bow that which God is doing. And so while you're tripping, the thing that you're tripping about is interfering with the finish. Our insert says, take it with me, this first point, the Sabbath is a period 
which we rest from all mental activity. The Sabbath is a period where we rest, so when we rest, we stop being active for a period of time in order to relax and get back the strength and the power and the insight and the imagination. We rest to refresh ourselves. There is nothing wrong with resting after you have done what you were supposed to do. When you are being used as a channel by which God is preparing to bring something forth that is new, what you cannot do, say cannot do, yeah. is neglect the step of rest. See, at some point, you have to trust God to be God in the process. See, God is wise about how God does God's business. If you will notice how God's greatest creation functions, look down your row. I'm talking about them. If you will pay attention to how God's greatest, highest, best creation functions, that creation rarely has the opportunity to decide for long whether or not it will rest. It is created with divine intelligence to at some point take a step back so that the soma, the body, can come apart to rest. See, God was not waiting for you to figure out whether or not you should rest. God put an internal clock in your soul that says, right about this time, you ought to start to lay it down to get you some rest. And when you don't take that rest, the people around you wish that you would. <laughs> Here's what they ain't telling you. You ain't so nice to be around when you are sleepy. I think I heard my honey say I'm talking to myself. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm uh, I, I'm good in the morning. It's, it's at nighttime when, when, like when I'm suppo supposed to be asleep. Like I, I, I'm not good to talk to when it's bedtime. I don't have nothing to say. I'm supposed to be asleep. Am I, am, am I right about it? So the seventh day refers to the mind's realization of fulfillment, right? So when we get to the day of rest, at that day of rest, what you must, what must accompany the body, the physical soul, is the mind's realization that everything that God promised is already fulfilled. See, you have to trust that the space is safe in order for you to rest. I don't know if you've ever, if you've ever, um, how should I say this? I don't know if you've ever dated anybody who was, <laughs> and you didn't, you didn't completely feel safe <laughs> around them. Like it's, 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 it's difficult to rest when you don't feel safe around. But when you understand that the idea is fulfilled, when you understand that the space is safe, when you understand that God is in the midst, your mind can come off of the thing that it's wrestling with. When you realize that your healing is already fulfilled, you don't have to worry about it. When you realize that your prosperity is already expressing through you, you don't worry about it. When you realize that because you know how to pray your children are safe, you don't have to worry about them. When you understand that it is fulfilled, then you can rest. But if you don't trust that it is safe, it becomes more difficult to rest. The mind, in order for it to truly rest in the realization, you must know that it is safe. You must know that it is safe. And remember that the mind is, is the seat of the soul where we see, hear, and feel. Mm-hmm. 
And so I see the scripture, I can hear the scripture saying, see it, see it, write the vision and make it plain. See, you have to write the vision and make it plain. You have to see it and be able to write it, but you can't write it if you don't see it. And if you don't see it, it becomes difficult for you to rest with it. You have to be able to see it in order to be able to rest with it. You have to be able to hear it. Mm -hmm. and, so, and so the writer of Proverbs says, trust the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, hear him, see him, and he will direct your path. This is how you become safe in your space. You have to know that God is. I'm going to talk to you about God in just a little bit. You have to be able to feel. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to feel in order to be safe in the space. And so the scripture says, my soul, mm, waits thou only upon God because my expectation is in him. There are some people you know who show up late when they're supposed to be on time. There's some people you've trusted with your heart who don't deserve to handle your heart, and so it, it, and so it impacts how you feel. But how, you, how many of you know God ain't like all the people you know? You have to be able to rest. You have to be able to rest. You have to be able to rest in the realization. See, you can never be too busy driving to stop for gas. You can, you, can never, you can never be so busy with what is in front of you that you won't stop for gas. Because here, inevitably, is what happens. You already got it, don't you? Here is the difference. Here is the difference. It's the difference between resting when you want to and resting when you have no control over where you rest at. I wouldn't want to be on the, on the uh, highway to nowhere, hoping that some stranger from AAA will stop and help me because I was not cognizant enough to acknowledge God and rest along the way. You can never be too busy to stop. You have to rest from the outer work Cease the, the daily occupation. You have to give yourself over to prayer and meditation. You have to take a time to come apart. You must rest. That second step says that God, take it with me, God has finished its work as creator. Mm -hmm. So God has finished its work as creator. Now, when God finishes its work as creator, there is an opportunity for us to align with what is already finished. Mm -hmm. See, the misconception is that we have to finish it. You don't have to finish it. What you have to do is rest. If you will rest, God will finish it. Right? Let me, let me show you how it works. Um, let me show you how it works in your backyard. You take a mustard seed, you dig some hole, you put the seed in the hole, yes? You put the dirt over the seed, and then you rest. Now, here is what you don't do. Because when you look at your neighbor's yard, you might see your neighbor's yard got mustard seeds coming up already. I want my mustard seeds to come up real quick like hers. What if I dig it up? Maybe if I dig it up and add some more fertilizer. See, we, we don't realize that the creative process, the activity of God already has it once you let the idea rest. See, but you have to let the seed rest. Every time you worry about it, you dig it back up. 
Every time you become anxious, every time you become nervous, every time you let what you see in front of you dissuade you from what you know you planted, you interrupt your process. So you don't necessarily have to take your hands and dig it back up because all of the work is in consciousness. And so if your mind digs up the seed, then your process is interrupted. And you are no longer resting. You are worrying. You have to let God be God. Everything that was needed for the manifestation was in the process. Let me remind you a few things about God. When we are working the creative process, remember that the Sabbath is also a state of spiritual attainment. Say spiritual attainment. The process is when we have an opportunity to cease from the personal effort and remember that it is the Father in me that does the work. Mm -hmm. I like the way Paul put it. Paul says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. And here is now when we are resting, here is how we rest in support of the idea that we have planted. You ready? Here is how you rest. You put your mind on this. God, as principle, refers to the unlimited, unchanging, eternal nature of God. God is not confused about the idea that God gave you. If God gave you an idea to bring forth and bless a thing, then God has not changed his mind from the seed that God gave you. See, because God as principle is unchanging and unlimited. You have to rest in that. God, the nature of God, is good and absolute good. So then the seed that God gave you brings forth a bit of good for you and the people who are connected to you. Mm-hmm. Can, can I drop this on you? Sometimes the people who are connected to us aren't doing as well as they could do because we are not as consistently in alignment as we are to be. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, they, I know they have their mind. I know they have their own mind. I know they have their own mind. But there's something about Jesus when he shows up that stuff just starts to change. So the Christ in you, when it shows up with the awareness that God is good, when you show up, the goods got to show up. Here's something that I want you to rest in. God is mind and the source of all knowledge, so God is omniscience. So when you are trying to figure it out, because God has omniscience, God has already worked it out, like the song says. I like that song. God is spirit. Mm -hmm. God is spirit, and as spirit, God is that unseen, everywhere presence, force of absolute good. So even if there are other people involved in your business deal and you are not face to face with them because God is everywhere and God knows what you need, they just somehow get an idea or an inclination or some intuition or some inspiration that says, yeah, I ought to go on and hire her. Or yeah, I ought to go ahead and approve this loan. Or yes, this is a good person to be in business with. Or yeah, let me just go ahead and drop off a $25,000 check to you. I'm telling you how to get your good. We can rest in the realization that God is substance, and as substance, God is the spiritual essence and energy that underlies all manifestation. And so if you really, truly understand the law and you have been working this process, I must ask you again, what would you be tripping about? Unless, of course... You haven't worked the process. If you, now, if you don't work the principle or you don't apply the process, 
then don't be expecting the promise. Are you still with me? Let's go to number three. In humankind, this is a holy time of rest. In humankind, the Sabbath or the rest is a holy time of rest. This rest is sometimes just a rest of the mind and not necessarily of the physical body. So what you must do, what you must do, hear me, what you must do is be in tune with God so that you can understand whether or not your particular Sabbath is a Sabbath that is a rest of the mind and or a rest of the body. Because sometimes the mind is resting, but the body is still working. Right? Sometimes the faith that must be put with the work still requires doing. Yes? So, so you, have to, you have to be clear. You have to be clear on what season you're in. You can plant, and then the harvest comes. Who's going to reap that harvest? So when the harvest comes, that's not a time for the body to rest. You with me? Now, this rest step, can sometimes be difficult for the folks who, who need, say need, to be in control. The rest step can be difficult for folk who, who, who need to be in control. Uh-huh. For, for, you, 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 know you know what I mean? Like the control, they call, they, call, they call them control for a reason. <laughs> I kept it real spiritual. <laughs> Somebody just filled in the blank. I love it. Thank you, evangelist. I believe that was you. This, it, it, can be, it can be difficult. Why? Because those of us who, and, 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 and let, let, let me just put this here. Let me put this here. this probably applies to um, like maybe not you, but the people on your row. Be because it, because it, it, it is a certain kind of consciousness that is attracted to this theology. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a certain kind of understanding and awareness that is attracted to this. And you might not call it control. You might not think it's control. But if you want to be certain that the things you are trying to do are going to work out the way you want them to work out, then I'm talking about you. Mm -hmm. if, if you're the kind of person who... Um, while you are in the process of completing one thing, you have your mind on all of the other things that you have to complete. Uh, I, I think I'm talking about you. It was, it was W. Clement Stone who used to, uh, in, in his seminars and in his trainings, he had this, this subject that was on the topic of, of having a sense of urgency. And his sessions, when he would give them, this particular session was called Do It Now. This is the name of his session. It was called Do It Now. And one of the recommendations that he would make to the people in attendance is he would say, when you get up in the morning, the first thing that I want you to do is 50 times before you get out of bed, balcony believers, the first thing I want you to do is say, do it now, 50 times. And then he said, at the end of your day, at the end of your day, before you go to bed, what I want you to do is 50 times say, do it now. And that's cool for a certain stage in the process. But if you are at the resting stage and you continue to stay preoccupied with I have to do this and I have to do that, and I have to do that and I have to do this, and I still got to do this and I still got to get that, and I still got to fix this and I still got to correct that, 
then what you end up with at the end of the rest period is a whole bunch of piles of do. Do. Your life can be consumed with this notion of do. Do. You can find yourself consumed with a whole bunch of do. Do. And I'm not saying that, that being able to do is not appropriate. I'm just saying that you don't want to overdo the do, do. Because you can overdo it. And so number four says that rest precedes manifestation. We are to work in mind for some good to be brought forth. Then when we have rested in the assurance that God's laws never fail, the demonstration will follow. So we rest in the assurance that God knows what God created. We rest in the assurance that God knows what God is doing with God's greatest creation. We rest in the assurance because we understand and trust the law. We rest in the assurance because we have already received the light of illumination that makes clear the way. We rest in the assurance because we have the faith to perceive, we have the faith to create, we have the faith to attract, we have the faith to shape and form, we have the faith to work in the vineyard before the manifestation comes. We trust the law, we trust the process because we know that when we use the power of our imagination, our imagination begins to shape and take hold of and form those things that we are seeing with our mind's eye, and so we're diligent to not see those things that we don't desire. We trust the law and we know the process works because we have the powers of will and understanding. We trust the law, we trust what God has created because we realize that we can discern, we have the spirit of discernment. You have the spirit of discernment. You have the spirit of discernment. I like Maya Angelou's words, when somebody shows you who they are the first time. Believe them. Let the spiritual eye show you what's in front of you. Discern rightly correcting and refusing those things that work and releasing those things that don't. You can trust the law because you have divine judgment on your side. And then you stand in the law because you have the power of wisdom and the power of love. Wisdom to give you more inspiration, love to attract to you that which you desire. And then you get to the place where you rest. As a master who has been called forth out of the divine essence of all that is good, you rest as a master who remembers that God's will for you is good and very good. You rest as a master Closing your eyes, turning within, right now in this moment. We rest as masters, masters over the situations, conditions, and circumstances that confront us. We rest as masters, settling into this moment remembering the divine province that is available, we rest in this moment, releasing the desire and the need to do more, but trusting all that God is. We rest. As 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 we settle in, settle down, our 
our souls stand erect. For in law and in truth, you are a master. God has called you forth out of his own omniscience. God has called you forth out of his own omnipresence. God has called you forth out of his own omnipotence. And God has placed at your access, Master, the ability to work the law. Remembering that as a master, you have the ability to guide and direct the way that you think and the way that you feel. Making yourself, Master, completely available to the inlet of God's divine ideas. Remember that these ideas come to bless you. They come to support you. They come to fortify you. And they come because it, the idea knows that you are the master and you can manifest this good. We rest in the awareness that we have everything we need in order to bring forth the kingdom right here on earth. As masters, we can promote peace, love, and unity. This master consciousness right now moves in every home that's represented here. See this master consciousness touching every person who is a part of your household. Bless them with love and peace and understanding the light that passes all human understanding. As a master, you're not limited by space or time. This master consciousness then touches your block. See the light and activity of spirit moving up and down the street that you live on. see people touching and agreeing with the master consciousness that you are sending forth. There are masters all around. And now send this master consciousness into your relationships. Send it into your bank account. Send it into your investments. Send it into your business, remembering that there is just one, God the good omnipotent. Let this master consciousness now be the healing bone that blesses the body temple from the crown of its head to the tip ends of its feet. Let this master consciousness heal the rough emotion. Let this master consciousness guide you into forgiveness. For a master must forgive. Let this master consciousness now bless this world. We remember that where two or more gathered together in his name, he is right there in the midst of them. That which they touch and agree upon is fulfilled. The masters are connected right here and right now. Sending peace to those places that are in turmoil. Sending love, sending understanding, the masters make a contribution. Now let that master consciousness work within our state. See it blessing the leaders, see it touching their minds and hearts. And now we let this master consciousness bless our city. See it touching and blessing the leaders. Guiding and directing them to incline their minds and hearts to the one presence, the one power, God the good. And now let this master consciousness come right back to the place where you sit. Remembering that where you are is holy ground. 
Take a deep breath. Rest in it. Rest in it. It's done. We have the assurance. We labor to rest. Take a deep breath. Repeat after me. The master in me beholds the master in you. The master in me beholds the master in you. The master in me beholds the master in you. Amen. Amen. And amen.